Have you ever told your partner you'd try to do something for them? Or they may, perhaps they told you the same and then it never gets done? Why is that? Did you know that try in the brain actually implies failure? When you say try, your brain doesn't actually work very hard at that. Let's talk more about this after the show. There are some common themes about why people don't do what they say they're going to do. Number one, they didn't want to do it in the first place. And maybe they knew they didn't want to do it right away and just didn't bother to tell you. Or maybe you didn't bother to tell them. But often, sometimes when we say yes, we don't actually tune in to what we actually want. Right? So here's a really good boundary lesson. Number one, tell somebody you're going to think about it for a minute. And that minute can be actually a minute, or maybe it needs to be a few days, but then really tune in and see, does that feel right for you? The second thing you can do then is once you have your answer, see if there's any conditions around it. For example, if I choose to go babysit my sister's kids, is there a condition around it? Such as I want them to be fed before I show up, or I want you guys to be home by midnight because I have something going on the next day. Right? So know your conditions before you say yes. Is there something that you need in order to honor the request fully? And then once you have that understanding, what are the consequences if they don't? Right? Because what we often do as humans is we say, yeah, I'll do that for you. And then perhaps we don't want to do it or someone lets us down and then we punish them. Right? And punishment is something that's not agreed on. Right? It's I'm choosing because I'm angry or I'm upset or I'm frustrated to do something to you or to make you suffer back. And that's not very healthy for any kind of relationship, for any kind of friendship. So one of the coolest things that you can do is actually set a boundary, set a consequence. I want you home by midnight. And if you're not home by midnight, I'm gonna charge you $5 every minute that you're late. Or if the kids aren't fed, I'm gonna order them a bunch of food on your account, right? Or whatever. So knowing what are the consequences if seven doesn't follow through. And by consequences, I mean like, what do you need to feel honored if that commitment doesn't get honored, right? What would make it equal? So, you, so that way you can't sit there and be like, well, they didn't do that. We didn't, and there's no blame, there's no shame. We can actually sit and say, okay, we both knew the consequences. We're going, we're following through on the consequences and it becomes part of that continual agreement. So instead of now trying to do something or doing a favor for somebody, now our boundaries are not only clear, but what happens if someone doesn't honor our boundaries is clear. And that can set us up for a really great way of communication and of really accepting what will happen if we don't follow through on what we say. But another thing that comes up, even if you set all those consequences, is that fear comes up, right? Like you say you're going to do something and then the fear, you get procrastination or maybe you feel overwhelmed by the task because it's such a big task or it feels like something that one cannot do. And when that fear comes up, our brain starts making up excuses for all the reasons why it's not safe. In other words, why all the reasons it would be a disservice for us to actually do that. So then our brain talks us into not doing it and all the reasons why we can say, well, it's okay that I didn't, didn't do that because of. We start justifying in our own minds. So notice if you've promised to do something for someone or they've promised to do something for you and they didn't, is there a potential that fear came up for some reason? That they were gonna be judged or um, that they were already had too much on their plate. And notice, have you ever wanted to do something for someone and you haven't? And that's why, once again, it's so important to make sure that when you're communicating something that you need from somebody or they're communicating that to you, that you really sit down together and see what do those parameters look like? Let's talk about that. Third thing I wanted to say is that if you were gonna do something and you didn't do it, be honest, admit it. Like, hey, I know I promised you we'd have that conversation on Thursday. We didn't have it because I got sidetracked. I would love to have that conversation on Sunday instead, right? Or, hey, I know I told you I'd get this done by Friday. Work got in the way. I'm super sorry, but mean it. And you apologize. And then set a new date. Have that negotiation, have that compromise. So that way people don't feel like they're left out in the dust. They feel like instead of feeling like they didn't honor, that you didn't honor their commitment, 
that you are actually paying attention and that you really want to follow through or renegotiate. Say, hey, I know I promised X, Y, Z and I realized that was way too big of a task for me. So how can I make this better? Can I do this piece of it? Can I do this little bit of it? Or can I do something different that feels more aligned, right? So you can actually have that conversation, but admitting what it is that you didn't do or did do that you weren't supposed to do or whatever it was can really honor that other person and knowing that at least you're making an attempt and that you're aware of the communication breakdown or of the ability breakdown in between the commitment and the follow through. And last but not least, sometimes we try things once or twice and we don't actually, aren't actually able to achieve our goal. We thought it was gonna be super easy and something went wrong. Something broke down, there was a time thing, technology didn't work, whatever it was. We say, oh, I tried, but it, I tried, but it didn't work. We make these excuses of why we didn't follow through. So don't try, find different ways. Ask for help. And this is some of the biggest things that I see is that people forget to ask for help, especially from the people that they committed to. Like, hey, keep me accountable if I don't do this. Or, hey, I realized I can't actually do this without your help. Or, hey, I realized I didn't actually understand super clearly what you're asking. I need your help following through on this commitment I made. Because that can sometimes happen, right? We think we know what somebody means and we actually realize we didn't know what that meant at all. Comment below, like, where have you fallen through on commitments and what prevented you from committing? fully following through and just understand most people really want to follow through on their word, right? Most people, when they say yes, actually want to do what they said yes to. So come to them with grace, compassion, and empathy, but also a sternness without anger and really be curious. Why did this happen? How can we make sure this doesn't happen again in the future? And how can I help you maintain your commitment that you made? So thanks for watching again. Remember you're loved, you're loving, and you're lovable. Have a great day.